In this video, I'm going to be explaining one of my favorite parts of running a freelance online business, which is the ability to make passive income selling digital products. I'm also going to be showing you exactly how step-by-step -step you can start selling digital products on your website today and have them purchased and fulfilled with absolutely no effort on your part. It's all automated. We're going to do this by opening a Wix online store, which brings me to today's sponsor, which is Wix. Wix is the sponsor for my freelance business startup series, and they have excellent tools for opening an online shop and fulfilling your digital product orders. So be sure to use this link down in the description below to start building your online store with Wix today. So first, let me inspire you for just a moment. Anyone from any business can really make passive income selling digital products because one of the most popular digital products is probably an ebook. Really anyone can make an ebook and a lot of people are willing to pay for those. All you have to do is make sure that your ebook is packed full of valuable information that your audience is willing to pay for. Ebooks can sell for a range of prices, maybe from one to twenty dollars i probably wouldn't go more than twenty dollars but i'm going to give you some examples of other digital products that you can sell too so for my graphic design business i sell design templates that allows users to plug and play their own graphic designs in the event that they decide not to work with me and hire me to do their designs for them and i charge 25 to 50 dollars for my templates and depending on the month people buy them almost every day or every other day wouldn't it be nice to just get a random $50 just for doing absolutely nothing or basically for selling something that you already created a while ago? I keep telling myself that I wish I started selling templates sooner because it's just so easy. Another example is that photographers decide to sell different filter presets that they use to edit their photos so that other people can edit their own photos using those filter presets. Basically, the options are unlimited. All you need to do is create an idea that's relevant to your business and your audience that has some kind of document or file file that they will want to download and make use of. So now I'm going to show you how to set up your online store using Wix so that this whole process runs itself. So to start, go ahead and use the link in the description below to start building your website with Wix today. And then hit the button that says create your store. So if you don't have a website already, that's perfectly fine. Just click create new site. And then here you'll see the options of what kind of website you want this to be. And you can select any of the options here, but if you click online store, then the website template is already gonna have an online store built into the template. However, if you click any of the other options here, then you can add an online store afterward. But in this video, I'm going to be editing my existing website, so I will show you how to add an online store to an existing website. But if you click this one, it's all done for you. You don't have to worry about it. So I'm just going to edit my website here, brittanynew.com. My other business website on Wix is where I'm already selling digital products, but I'm going to actually add a digital product shop to this website. So when you get to your website, go over here to click Add Apps, and then you're going to search in the app market for online store. It's the number one recommendation here. So you can just click here and it will show you to the online store applications. So Wix actually has multiple online store apps that you can use. They've got all these different options, but the one that they specifically created, which is clearly has the most reviews and the most use is called Wix stores. So this is the online store app that I recommend. And you're just gonna click add to site. And now it's going ahead and adding the store to your website and all the necessary pages and components that it's going to need to function properly on your website. And you can already see up here in my menu, they've just added a new page called shop to my menu. Of course, we wanna go and make that all capitalization just to match the other ones. So one of the first things that I notice is my new shopping cart icon is overlapping my menu. So I'm just gonna to wanna to adjust that menu so that we make space for this cart icon. And I believe you don't have to have the cart icon, but it's kind of nice so that people, when they add something to their cart, they don't forget about it. It's always in that upper right hand corner with the number of how many items they've added to the cart. So you definitely want to keep this and you can change the way it looks um, by clicking settings and you can make it look like an actual cart or a shopping bag or different icons here or just the word cart. Um, I like the, I like the original shopping bag. It's pretty minimalistic. I am going to change the color to match the rest of the branding on my website though. So I'm going to make that this color. Uh, it's a little too light maybe. So then I'll just do the dark gray. So to change the products, these are just samples. Of course, uh, we're going to go manage products by clicking on the store. 
And here are all the sample products that you have. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of these and start from scratch. Now I'm gonna click add new product and here you can distinguish whether you want a digital file or a physical product. So a digital product is anything that can be delivered with a file and it's gonna be delivered instantly as soon as they pay. And a physical product is something that will probably require shipping and things like that. So you're gonna to wanna to get their shipping address and it is an actual item. So for this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on digital products, but the only real difference is to click this if you wanna start a physical store. So I'm gonna call this um, business starter ebook. This is just a sample, but I already have uh, sample photos ready to upload to my store so I can show you guys what it looks like. So there's the name of the product and you can create collections. So I'm gonna make this collection ebooks and then maybe you have another collection templates. Maybe you have another collection called merch where you're gonna sell t-shirts and hoodies that have your logo on them. So here are some different collections you can add. And now I'm going to upload the file of the actual product. So this is the file that they are going to receive when they buy it. These aren't like the promotional photos, we'll do that somewhere else. So this is gonna be a PDF document. And so now I'm just uploading the PDF for the Easy Graphic Design Business eBook. And I'm just using this as a sample. The document is uploaded and that's what they will download when they buy. Here's the name, Business Starter eBook. You can add a little ribbon that says new arrival. Um, I'll just add one so that you guys can see what it looks like. And let's set the price at $10. And you can also make it on sale by clicking this and you can reduce like 10% off and then there's the new price or you can make the price $4 off and then there's the new price. Um, some people like to mark up their products just to put them on sale again so that it looks extra enticing but I don't really believe in doing that. I would only do that if I had a price and then I was actually reducing the price. So moving on to the product description, I'm just gonna write a little sample. And then here is where you add the promotional images or videos. I'm just gonna add some images for this. You wanna have as many photos and videos as possible because it all helps. Then you can add an info section. So this is if you wanted to add, you know, extra specifications for the product uh, for an ebook that's not really necessary. So here you can also track the inventory of your product so that you can determine if you only wanna sell like a limited number of copies for any reason to create scarcity, or you don't need to do that if it's a digital product because chances are you wanna sell as many as possible. You can also create a coupon, you can create a promo video, and you can do all kinds of things to promote your product over here. But for now, I'm just gonna click save and that is going to be the first product in our online store. So if you want to duplicate a lot of the specs that you created for this one, then you can just click this button over here and click duplicate, and then you'll have a copy of that. And all you have to do then is change, obviously the title, uh, you'll wanna swap out the file for the new correct file and change any other information such as the product description and the price. And then you've got a second product. So here you can see what the online store looks like with these three products and you can see what that ribbon looks like for the product that's labeled as new. Um, you can always choose to remove them or add them to all of them if you have something to say about each and every product. And what I like about the digital products is that they've added this download icon which also helps to indicate that it's going to be an instant download. And so like I said, you might also want to have some physical products on your online store, even as a freelance online business. For example, you also might want to sell a printed book copy of your ebook. So let's call that printed book. And then here you can also add your information like your return policy or any care instructions that you might want to add. You can ask any other questions like maybe this is a custom book. So you could ask like what name do you want? in the book, for example. And then maybe you have like a 50 character limit for the, for the name. Um, maybe you wanna add things like size, color, or material. And for this, you probably wanna track inventory. Maybe you only have 100 print books in your possession. And you can also offer subscription products on a recurring basis. Like maybe you wanna sell a book once a month. Like maybe this is like a monthly journal business, for example and once a month they get 
for, you know, until canceled, they get a $20 book, for example. And now here is our full online shop with all the products in it. Obviously, I suggest having all kinds of different photos. Every product should have its own collection of unique photos. And then you'll notice that the physical products don't have this download symbol like they do here. So now that we have all the products in our online store, there's still a few super important things that we need to do before we're ready to launch the store. So in order to check these things off our list, let's click on the settings tab and go to my dashboard. And then over in the sidebar, scroll down all the way to settings. And here are your website settings. And then you're gonna scroll down to where it says e-commerce and finance. So this is where you manage your payment settings, your transactions, and how you sell on your online store, just like it says right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna determine the way that your website accepts payments. Choosing a secure payment provider is very important. I personally like using the direct credit and debit card payments as well as PayPal. Those are my go-tos, but they have a variety of different payment options that you can choose from if you prefer any of these methods of doing your payment transactions. So go ahead and select a payment option that you like and hit the connect button. So once you've connected to a secure payment provider, you might see on your account that it says not accepting payments yet because you need to upgrade to a Wix business and e-commerce premium plan. So click there to upgrade and here you'll see the options of all the Wix business and e-commerce plans that you can choose from, which all have what you need to run your online store and then hit select for the plan that you want. So the next thing you have to do on your e-commerce checklist is define the shipping for your business. So in the online store that I created, I was selling physical and digital products. So for any physical products, you need to determine the shipping rules and how the shipping is calculated. I'm currently located in Spain right now, so your domestic country is going to appear here. Then you have the international prices, and you can even add individual regions. For example, maybe there's a country that's a little bit closer to you than other countries, and you can calculate a specific shipping for that region. So let's go through and set the shipping rule for the domestic region. You can select free, a flat rate, you can charge by the weight of the product or by the price or by the product itself. So let's just make it flat rate shipping and we're gonna charge $5 for shipping. You can also set it to offer free shipping when customers buy a certain amount, which is a really good idea to incentivize people to buy more stuff. So maybe if they spend $50, they get free shipping. You can also choose to do local delivery or local pickup if buyers wanna opt out of paying for shipping. So go ahead and save that. And then you'll wanna repeat that process for all the other regions that you ship to. So the next really important thing you wanna do for your online store is establish sales tax to make sure that you're selling everything legally. Wix actually has this really cool tool that will give you the exact tax calculation for every region and it's completely automated. So when you upgrade, I'd highly recommend you to use this tool so that you don't have to worry about what the sales tax is going to be and add it for every single region like you would otherwise here. Otherwise, you can go ahead and do that, especially if you're only going to be shipping to a few different countries or maybe only your local country. So for example, sales tax in Spain is 21% and you can decide if you wanna add sales tax onto shipping depending on what the requirements are in your region. So once you have the sales tax, just click save, and then you can go ahead and add an additional country. I'm going to add the United States, for example. And in the United States, every state has different sales tax. So I'm from California, I'm just gonna add California sales tax, and the sales tax is something like 9.95%, and so I'm just going to add something like that. I'm not sure if that's the exact rate today, but that's just an example. So then you can decide here if you want the tax to be included in your price or not. So you can either add the tax on or you can include it in the price. Um, there are benefits to both of these options, but that's your choice to decide. So now that we've completed these essential items, let's go back to the website because there are two more really important things that I suggest you're doing for your online store. The first thing that is a non-negotiable is you need to have a custom domain for your online store. You're gonna be selling products and you wanna come off as legitimate and professional and you don't wanna have some weird um, domain that doesn't just roll off the tongue for your store. So you're gonna to go to settings and you're gonna click connect domain. I already have a custom domain for brittanynew.com, so you can choose to add an existing domain if you already own one and you wanna transfer it to this site or to Wix, or you can go ahead and buy a brand new domain and then you can use Wix's domain search bar to see if it's available, .com then click search, it's available. Then click get it. 
So then the very last thing that you have to consider is what does your store look like on mobile? A lot of users are gonna be accessing your website from their mobile device. So all you have to do is click on this icon that says switch to mobile, and then you can check out what your website looks like from a mobile device. You might have to rearrange a few items to make everything look better on mobile, but once you've done that, you'll see that your online store already looks pretty presentable in a mobile friendly way. If you wanna make any changes to the way it looks, just click on the settings for the store, and then you can decide what layout you want. If you want everything in one column so everyone can see a really good picture of the product, or maybe you want it in two columns so that they can see more products at one time. I personally like the two columns option better. And so once you have the look that you want for the mobile version of your store, just go ahead and click save, and then click publish and your store is ready to go. So that's it for creating your online store. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to use this description down below to start building your website and your online store with Wix today. Thanks to Wix for sponsoring this video. And also in the description, you will find a PDF resource that will help you brainstorm different ideas to launch a digital product that you can sell in your online store too. Selling digital products in addition to offering your freelance services is just another source of income and that can really come in handy if business is ever a little bit slow or especially these days when a lot of us are locked inside and maybe some of us can't fulfill the services that we would be able to fulfill if things were open as usual. So templates have made a huge impact on my business and I hope that digital products can make a big impact on yours too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.